still unravished bride of quietness. Wait, I, how do you say that in Klingon? Oh, Star Trek poet Mike Demerit, he might know how. Plus, getting the world's hackers together in one place, mm, probably not a good idea. Making that place Las Vegas? Yeah, definitely not a good idea. We're gonna infiltrate DEF CON 13 and we have to assume that Electric Playground's Julie Stouffer knows her stuff when it comes to the occasional video game, so show her no mercy in our LAN party. And now, the TV equivalent of the fastball special, it's Attack of the Show. Big up on this. I'm not going to get in the way of this. Sean Baby, welcome them, please. Welcome to Attack of the Show. Yeah. Where you see Kevin Pereira prance like a little girl. He's really I doing really, it. I, I really don't have to because I do it normally. Yeah. It's like, it's, what do you want I'm always me? calling you foodie on the show. I'm huh? really sorry about I that. I wonder why. Know. You're the guy with the thing. I mean, and the, right. and the stuff. You're right. You're right. Yeah. And, and the, the stuff uh, and uh, nipple rings. Nipple, yeah, yeah. But Let's not go there. it's linked to the chain on your taint. That's just true. That's yeah. just true. Our Prince Alberts are, are linked as one. <laughs> it's like Wonder <laughs> Twins combining again. That's oh, so gross. Sarah. What's a Prince Albert, Kevin? <laughs> it is a, uh, a boss from the third Prince of Persia. <laughs> really? No, that's it. Sarah, what's up? Oh, I always thought it was something totally different. Oh, Sean, yeah. your hair's different. You know, you got I different colored hair. Look good for the TV. Yeah. We, I go home, come back, you're different color. It's an adventure on my head every day. I, I like it. It's really nice. Thank Blue, you. purple. You look great too. Good time. Thanks, Sean. Great. I guess baby. I still look like crap. Thanks, guys. It's great. It's fantastic. Um, today's a great uh, show, man. It's Thursday. I'm near, excited near the about home stretch. Show. Relationship Thursday. Mm. Love the relationship. Give some irresponsible love advice. Right behind Margarita Friday. Mm -hmm. We're going to make it happen tomorrow, by the way. Yeah, we are. We are. Yeah. We are. Uh, but right now, uh, Sean brought something to share with us. I oh. did. Now, um, Please share. Kevin, have you ever invented a hobby so awesome you wanted to keep it to yourself? Yeah, do I want to reveal it? If I you feel like it. I make MySpace accounts uh, for individual body parts. I just want, you know, each... I visited your kneecap. Exactly. That's good. I sent it a love letter. Well, I collect lame um, self-defense manuals. Let and this on, is How to Fight one. Tough how by to Coast Guardsman Lieutenant Jack something something. Okay. And uh, this is how to kill Nazis and old-timey racial stereotypes. All right. And here you see uh, how to kill a Nazi in his underwear and a sports jacket. And step one is to tear off his jacket, and then if you turn to the next page, oh, yeah, let's do that. You knee him in the dong. Oh, all right. So and, Jim, and it's that easy. It's just that easy. Hold on, what's this here, one here? Here, um, he also shows you how to search a man in his underwear, or here, how to jump on his butt. Uh, what's the first line of text there in that defense move? Something like this was bound to happen sooner or later, it and that sure does was. happen when you fight a naked man. It does. You will eventually jump what? on his ass. This is this is how to fight tough. Right. By and this Jack is Dempsey. stopping suicide attackers. Yes. And I got this at a karate store, and as a comedy writer, I know I have a better sense of irony than a dude working at a karate store, so I built a wheelchair ramp to this uh, sarcasm. And I went up there excited about this book, and the dude's like, you never know, man. The world we live in, you never know. This shows how to kill terrorists with a Coke can. Well, this is, this is my favorite. It, wait, where is the... Or a meal tray. The meal tray. <laughs> yeah. Just gouge him in the name of the meal tray. <laughs> Discreetly. You don't want to alarm the other terrorists. Put his Adam's apple in an upright <laughs> lock position and you show... You son of a bitch. <laughs> this is for freedom. <laughs> This is great. I love this book. Uh, yeah. And it tells you how to so, make knives out of Coke cans. Yeah. And then it tells you, you yeah. should practice it at home <laughs> in case you're ever in the air. Quietly stomp on the Coke can to create a knife. It, they'll never know you're coming. Sarah, you want to? Absolutely. Keep the skies safe, Sarah. Got terrorist to kill. Catch. Fly the friendly skies. All right. Uh, something that's, that's been out now. We, we finally got one in. It's, people are talking about it. It's this little bad boy right here. It's Apple's new Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse. It's exciting. Yeah, uh, it. it's, it's all new. Here it is. We're going to show it off. Uh, it's got little side buttons that you can click uh, when you do so. We have it set to... Wait, uh, this is a Mac button? Mac yeah. mouse with two buttons? What, no, it's, it's only one button, but in order to... So, so like, here, I'll show you. Uh -huh. the, the left click is when you have, you know, both, both uh, fingers uh -huh. on it. If you want to right click, you just take your index finger off. And it considers it a right click, ah. so it, it takes a little little getting used to. But so once you do, a lot for me, Kevin. it works. Well, hold on, hold on. Again, the side buttons. You click in the side buttons, and it'll bring up Whoa. a mosaic for you. So you just kind of mm, give it a squeeze. Something. Give it a little squeeze. Still not sold. Huh? No. 
You gotta wow me. I'm gonna kill. Uh, all right. How about this middle this middle button here? It's actually it's like it's not a scroll ball. It's or it's, it's not a scroll wheel. It's a scroll ball. So you can go uh, down, up, down, left, right. You can even do both at the same time. I'm killing your mouse, KP. You don't. You're not a fan of the mouse. Give me the scissors. Okay. All right. Listen. It's USB connected <gasps> in. Uh, you can squeeze. It's got the with one button. You can do both. I. It's fifty bucks. Is fifty the price? bucks. Oh my. Well now, it's fifty bucks of trash, Kevin. Whoa. Ah, I yeah. need this mouse. All right. Ugh. It's really tough, though. You gotta give it that. Take it's your time with it. Vice give it an elbow drop. Get Ugh. in on it. What are you doing? Ugh, I hate it. You're getting all casino that on it. That might be as smash as we can get it. But right, there it is. Well, we lost a squeeze button, but there yeah. you have it. Wow. Well, it's very durable, audience. <laughs> it does have that going for it for 50 bucks. It's not wireless. It's not laser. You can't. It's gotta have lasers. Everything's good with lasers. I agree. Well, now it has nothing. This is true. And it's your fault. Oh, that's not my fault. Don't... Hold on, I gotta switch computers here. This is. <laughs> okay. Finally, I'm very excited about this one. Our forum posters yesterday were wondering. Well, someone called out, uh, "Why does our show have an editor if it's live?" Because clearly, the show wow. can't be edited, right? It's live. Explain that one. Wow, how are we gonna get out of checkmate, Kevin? Well, and they... the reason is because one of our editors supposedly posts in the forum, so they're like, yeah. "Oh, so they're what are you talking about?" Personally. Steve Concatelli. That's, that's mm -hmm. who they're talking he posted about. Posted under the name Conc. In fact, here's Steve now. Let's bring him out, uh, ladies and gentlemen. At home. This is. This is Steve Concatelli. He exists. He edits our show. Uh, you know, there's packages that roll in. There's B-roll. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve actually posted a dissertation this explaining is not his the existence. First TV show I've been on. And uh, thank you, Steve, for joining us. By the way, so he, he exists. Con <coughs> good to have you out here. There, there nice he is. Nice to see you. Now, uh, you know, so he he explained his entire job. It was like a four-page post. Someone <laughs> even tried to explain like how how we can have an editor. Uh -huh. uh, probably Emo said, "Quote: well, AOTS has a teleprompter. It's live, but not really. That's all you're getting from me." Like, that's his explanation. Face. Oh, yeah. oh, man, how can we recover? He just got owned. Uh, you know what we had to do. Yeah, we just got to ban the guy. Yes. Because, uh, you know, you can't have people like this on your forums. I'm sorry. So, so here it is. We can't uh, have people like this anywhere. I love Ico. I'm <laughs> sorry. It's, uh, it's I love Ico here. There's oh. the username. And we're just going to... Oh, you know, gonna you do the honors, Sean. Go for it. Oh, thank just you. Just give, give it a little See left ya. click. <gasps> yep. Done and done. Transferring data. Boom. Transferred. Oh. It's that easy. Suck it, kid. Doesn't it feel good? <laughs> oh, it felt real good. Felt <laughs> good. Yeah, huh? See ya. Whew, I need yeah. a cigarette. We feel our show <laughs> isn't confrontational enough, so we're going to let Sean Baby loose to tear up your love life. It's Relationship I Call can't wait Thursday. For this. Yay! I'm going to give the best yeah. advice today. The number is 800 839 7880, and you can email us through our web form at attackoftheshow.com slash ask us. Of course, you can chat with us in our IRC chat room, too. Just go to chat.g4tv.com. But of course, Thursday isn't just about demeaning our viewers' sex lives, or lack thereof. No! Right. It's also when we unleash the attack of the show, Verizon Broadband Land Party Battle 2, Electric Boogaloo. Here's our embedded reporter, Brendan Moran. Woo! I think it's, it's Bugaloo. Oh, it's Kevin. Boogaloo. My, my Boogaloo? Apologies. Was it was that with wheels and what was the other guy's name? Turbo. And Very good. Nitro. Yeah. Yes. Now that's American Gladiators. You're right, I'm thinking laser. It's all right, don't worry about it. And ice. <laughs> Brandon, what's going on anyway, over there? Anyway, yes, it's the AOTS Verizon Broadband Land Party Battle. Today, <laughs> we're playing Battlefield 2. Joining us is Julie Stouffer from G4's very own Electric Playground. Hi, Julie. Hi, how's it going? Good, how's the gaming? You know, it's good. I'm enjoying it thoroughly. Actually. Yeah? Yes. i got to ask you a question. Um, is Tommy Tellerico um, the monster that everybody says he is? I love Tommy. Yeah. Honestly, if a man isn't opinionated, get him away from me. That's what I think. It's fun working for him. He's not as demanding as, uh, as the rumors would have you believe. Right? He's a good guy. A little short, but he's a good guy. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, short, he is. It's short, okay. So short. is Tom Cruise, and he seems cool. Does anyway, he? later on, <laughs> uh, you just showing... call Tom Cruise cool? <laughs> I don't know about that one. Uh, <laughs> the the hint of sarcasm in that one. Oh, sorry. Just, sorry. Uh, good luck, Julie, because we'll be back to talk to you, and I'm going to show Julie my love sack a little bit later in the show. Whoa. Look! <laughs> Sorry. Why do we play this childish games? Because after we come back after these commercials, we are going to show you what's down at DEF CON 13, and all we got was this lousy t-shirt. And all of your sensitive personal information. Attack of the show, baby. Attack. You know, most conventions are pretty harmless. You know, you got the guy dressed up as Kratos doesn't have real swords, and you're fairly certain that you saw one of those vampire masquerade geeks in direct sunlight near the hot dog vendor. Well, at Hacker Expo DEFCON 13, however, these guys walk it like they talk it. 
Chef Con 13, Compromise Boxes, Linux, Undercover FBI Agents. It's all here. Today, we're going to take a look inside and see if I can find the guy that's been using my credit card to play Star Wars Galaxies. I want to do a con on the West Coast that wasn't tied to like a, a time of the year. So I needed a name for it. I also needed a location. There are no hackers in Vegas. It was just a barren wasteland of casinos. So if you wanted to come to the con, you actually had to drive here, get in a car, you know, or fly here. So we were hoping that that would self-select the people who really were into it. Four or five years after DEF CON started, everything switched upside down. You know, Linux was free, PCs are a giveaway, internet's, you know, dial up or AOL's giving you a million hours. So all the reasons you broke into originally are all gone, you know, they switched around, they're no longer there. So it's been, been this whole evolution of the whole hacker scene. You know, hacking is a skill set, you know, in finding security vulnerabilities and security failures. And you have different people that are in niche areas. Like some people are not even really in the computer side of it. So every year that I come, I learn something. Well, wallet sheep used to be literally uh, written on uh, paper plates. And these guys would sniff the wireless network. And everything they saw, something they shouldn't, like somebody logging in to check their mail, clear text with no encryption or protection, they'd write down the information, they'd stick it up on the wall, like, you know, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. And it grew and grew and grew, and it's gotten so big now, you'd think people would get smarter over the years. Um, but now it's electronic, and they project it on the wall. DEF CON is like the real live action version of all the things that I read in life. The best thing so far um, that I've seen that I got to participate in was the KegBot. It's actually a kegulator that has individual tags. The, they're not RFID, but they're tags that store your username and password. It's an I button, and you plug it in, it tells you your stats, how much beer you drank, and you can't get beer unless you have one of those. So what are you guys doing at DEF CON? Well, uh, we're showing off our RFID long distance world record. Uh, we can basically read a tag that you would find at a Walmart, mm -hmm. and we're going to read it from distances never before thought possible and never done before. It's possible that if the store doesn't have them set up correctly, you can rewrite the tags and change the codes that are on there. So say your 27-inch uh, uh, LCD TV rings up as a uh, box of uh, Cheetos. So it's, it definitely has room for exploitation. Yeah. One of our biggest projects that we've been working on lately is called From the Shadows. It's an IPTV program based around new technologies and using technologies in ways never before thought possible. What exactly is this? It's, it's just a normal segue, um, except we took it to a chopper shop in Phoenix. They have it all custom painted, mirrors put on, new rims, new tires. I just got to pimp it out a little bit. It went from Seattle all the way to Boston on foot. It was a bunch of our students at the university, and we sponsored them. We bought this for them to take across the country as part of a project that they were doing. It's a great community of people that share interest in telephony, in computers, and security. And it's like uh, getting a bite of that apple of uh, forbidden knowledge. Edited by Steve. All right, so these guys are these guys are hackers. Yeah, most of them, for the most part. And they're, yeah, they're all together there. Yeah, they they don't have a problem with you going in with the video camera. Were they accommodating? Did they you know get a lot of hands in the lens? Or they actually had some requirements that we couldn't shoot crowds, we mm -hmm. couldn't show faces. So we pretty much had to get agreements from anyone we shot. Right. that they were going to be on camera. But so saw lots a, of people on camera, so some people were very yeah, accommodating. Anonymity is high at DEF CON, but a lot of people are were willing to let their guard down and talk with us. Very so nice. I was really, really cool with it. Did that. you ever find the guy that, that took your account? No, I did. Still Arr! using it. Some Wookiee. What did you say? Was that, Arr! how would... Arr! Yeah, okay, that was it. That was Arr, it. Yeah. All right, very nice, Scott. Stay tuned, because we'll be looking at the fun side of DEF CON 13 tomorrow. Now, hurry back, because we have a special report from the Los Angeles leg of our co-host casting call coming up. You might actually see yourself. Plus, Mike Demerit is here to read from his book of poetry, his book of Star Trek poetry. Mike Demerit had every geek's dream job, assistant director on Star Trek Voyager and Star Trek Enterprise, but his real talent apparently was poetry, and he's here to share with us the most beautifully written take on Star Trek since, well, since some of your internet fan fiction. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So, so tell us, uh, why poetry? Is this something that you, you'd done throughout your entire life and now just decided to apply, you know, to Star Trek? I mean... Not really. I've written my entire life. I used to write comic books for DC Comics. Uh, but Jerry Ryan is the reason, really, if you mm. want to know. I, I would uh, take call sheets and write little joke poems and stuff that I thought was funny to get the actors to laugh or the crew to laugh, then I'd throw them away. And she told me, stop throwing those away. You know, someday there are going to be people out there who want right. them, publish them, and 
It took me eight years, but I built up the courage to let some of them loose. Very nice. Very nice. See, I do obscene doodles in my notebook liner during <laughs> meeting notes. Don't throw them away. Remember John Lennon. Ah, see, Human Resources said if I don't throw them away, I'm, I'm gone. Don't listen. They, they beat me up. Don't so. listen to them. All right. Now, so tell me, what are the poems about now? What's the subject matter? Well, the subject matter is life, really. It's life in Hollywood, what it's like to be working in the business. Uh, about a third of what I do specifically relates to Star Trek only because that's what I was doing. But I simply wrote what came to mind. There, they shift rapidly from one kind of focus to another, right. from the purely humorous to the absolutely dead serious. And purely haiku form? or No haiku. No haikus, thank no you. No haiku. I thank leave you. those to the uh, Asian side <laughs> of the world. Very nice. Now, now the poems, are, are they basically comedic? or are there, are there Primarily they are comedic because I, I like meter. And to have meter, you usually have to have humor. Right. But there are some that are about uh, you know, the pitfalls in life, particularly in, in life in Hollywood where you spend spend 16 hours a day and that's a normal day. Right. Nine to five is lunch in our business. Now, how, how long were you working on the actual Star Trek series? I started uh, as a, on the pilot for Voyager thinking if I, if I do my job right, I might get a year out of this. I stayed 11 years. Wow. Started as a second, second AD and worked my way up to first AD. Well, congrats on that, man. Now, now when, a long run. I mean, Enterprise, though, when that got canceled, I mean, how, how did you take that? It's premature. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of reasonable argument for canceling a show that had the ratings that we did, but the bottom truth was it was still a profitable venture in the long run. But we live in a corporate environment now, and everybody doesn't think about three years from now. They think about next quarter. And if this show isn't making money next quarter, somebody feels their job's on the line. Therefore, they will cut the show. Sure, sure. But I guarantee you, in the long run, it will make considerable money, and they'll regret that they don't have three more years to put out on DVDs. Right. Oh, I bet. I bet. I bet. Yeah. So now you've, you've taken your poems. You've put them into book form. In the process. I got a call from you guys before I'm even ready yet. We just launched We get it before website. it gets out, Mike. I don't know if you're aware. That's what the show before, does. That's our job. Before. But we're, still, we're still uh, getting bids from printers. Very nice. So, but when do, when do you expect or hope to have it actually released? The target was late October, early November, um, with a primarily convention release. I'm hoping to, in fact, I'm in the process now of trying to connect with conventions that want me to speak. I have multimedia events that I do at conventions, and then use that as a vehicle to sell the books, and of course have an online presence until we can convince bookstores that. You know what? There is still a poetry section. It's only this big. Right. But it's you, there. You could put one book in People there. People browse it. It's fine. It'll fit. In fact, <laughs> you know what? Let's, let's just get right to it. If you don't mind, I'd love to, to you know, let's, let's hear some poetry. This is an excerpt from Changing Captains. If you want to see how it ends, go to the website. The first one they hired caused the crew all to fret. Renowned was the phrase that had chilled down the set. Instead of commanding voice writ on the page, she whispered the keyword so faintly, engage. None dared to allow themselves thought of his meaner. Only the director should question demeanor. Perplexed without venom, he explained it as such. She disagreed soundly. His way was too butch. Her position, though clear, revealed the bad omen. She would not play a man, for she was a woman. At lunch it was busy, the veterans did hobnob. If it stays like this, we'll all need a new job. Three days into shooting, and we started late. Another delay would be tempting bad fate. The first one knew too, a credit to her heart. It just wasn't working, she surrendered the part. Our schedule's meaningless, shredders in place. ADs are born ready, chaos they embrace. If you'd like more info on Mike Demerit, check our show notes and keep an eye out for the book later this year. Now, if I need to say any more than the feed is coming up after this break to get you to come back, then I don't know. I just, I, I just don't know you anymore. Plus, a bunch of freaks were hanging out in our parking lot last week, so we decided, ah, oh, what the hell? Maybe one of them can host this show. You know, we were well, we were all set to go on without you, but it's honestly, it's, it's quite nice that you came back. Thanks. Still on the way, we'll be sending up warning flares in our LAN party. Plus, we'll be putting more spit and duct tape on our ultimate gaming machine. And tomorrow, we have a live performance by hip-hop star, Hot Carl. Sean Baby's a backup dancer. As you know, we began our open casting call for a new permanent co-host right here in sunny little Los Angeles. Why? Because it's where we keep our stuff. Here's what happened when we tried to violently separate the men from the boys. 
Another beautiful sunny day at the G4 Studios in Los Angeles. Oh, I love the smell of hopefuls in the morning. I'm here to try out because whenever you come to Los Angeles, you should try out for something. It's part of the mystique. I'm here today because I'm job searcher now. I flew all the way from England to be here to, to try out for the attack of the show. The fun of the day really got going when we quizzed some people on what they would use to build a computer. Now, there were some people who knew their stuff and others who, well, didn't seem to know much of anything. SATA Raptor 10,000 RPM hard drives. I'm not quite sure. Um, then I'd get a secondary um, hard drive on SATA also. Um, I'm not quite sure how many RAM she should run. People made the most of the situation and discussed the hottest topics raging in the tech and video game industries. You're, you're playing by their rules and saying that I'm going to buy this and buy that, whatever they tell me to buy. The hot coffee reminds me a lot when I work out. You know the pump? I did it once, but uh, I didn't like it. So good. There were even a few people who went home knowing that they were, well, going places. I'm going to Hollywood, baby! Yes! Others didn't have the same luck, and they went back to wherever they came from. It obviously didn't go too well. We spoke to one of our illustrious producers to see if he could provide any insight. We had people who showed up from, who drove all the way from Texas, who came in from a little tiny town called Duval in Washington State. And most are nerds, a few people masquerading as nerds. Unfortunately, no one has shown up in either a Stormtrooper costume or as a Klingon yet. Uh, hopefully we'll find our nerd, our geek, our host here in this motley crew of people. Over 350 people came out and auditioned for us. You have what it takes to be the next co-host of... The Tech of the Show! <laughs> Edited by Steve. Hey, we're not even close Welcome to being back. done, though. You look great that as a cow, that. dude. I, was that up there earlier? Yeah, the whole time. Mm. Thanks, guys. Appreciate <laughs> it. I'm like, I don't look behind me. I'm looking at the words. We're coming to San Francisco on the 6th and to New York on the 13th. We will select some candidates. Give them a one-week tryout on the show. Just go to attack of the, the show dot com slash host search for more information and to weigh in on your favorites or to gripe about and our choices. Please as usual. do well. I'm tired of being here. Seriously, the whole the and whole I'm, staff yes. is actually tired of Sarah's you. Sarah's been complaining. This it smells like day. peroxide and oxycontin <laughs> for some reason. Now, for the news that no other network would be caught dead covering, it's the feed. time now but is amazon finally ready to expand its services to the next logical level no no not white slavery you silly digital music well it looks like it actually digital music news recently pointed to a job posting on paidcontent.org that read amazon.com is seeking a content acquisitions manager for our fourth company digital music service so all signs seem to be pointing to Amazon heading into the ring with iTunes. Although experts claim that since this field is already getting crowded, Amazon may not be attempting to usurp iTunes per se, but just add digital music as an option to its normal CD buy-in system. Now, the biggest hurdle facing Amazon is how to develop a way to offer gift wrapping for an MP3. But don't tell them it's impossible. Damn it, they'll find a way. Now, according to a group called Air Defense, apparently a lot of wireless attacks took place during the hacker convention DEFCON 13. <laughs> this is the most shocking revelation since it was announced that there were meth addicts at Sturgis. And I am shocked. Not only did Air Defense tally a whopping 2,500 wireless attacks over a two-day, 10-hour monitoring period, they marveled at the increasing complexity of these attacks. They noticed an increase in new techniques like why phishing and evil twin scams. Other thuddingly obvious things that they observed, hackers ignore Stridex commercials. None of the attendees are willing to defend Matthew Lillard's performance in the movie Hackers. And using the convention center's ATM machine is really stupid. Now, according to a report on CNET, Tower Stream, which is a leading provider of high-speed internet service, has apparently teamed up with internet telephone provider Vonage. What does this mean? Slow news day, that's what it means. But hey, we play the cards we're dealt. 
These are our cards. This partnership could, however, seriously threaten wired broadband internet service since this is the first time a major internet provider has ever teamed with an internet phone service. Vonage already boasts almost 800,000 subscribers, and Tower Stream is already planning to expand its service, currently available in New York and Los Angeles and Chicago, Boston, San Francisco, into more cities. Once again, to sum this all up, Slow freaking news day. We don't always have to dress things up for you people. We keep it real. Now, you know what must be the best job in the whole world? Being a Russian researcher with no funding to speak of and lots of downtime. You're just free to make up ridiculous crap. For example, case in point, check out a recent explanation for crop circles as posted on the Moscow News website. <clears throat> While everyone else in the world understands that crop circles are a hoax and even an Aborigine shut-in can explain to you how to fake one, Russian researchers have discovered that they're actually the result of microwave emissions from lightning strikes. Yeah, they literally put stalks of wheat into microwaves. This is the research. And develop, determined that they're all bent the exact same way as those found at crop circle sites. <laughs> kind of makes sense, right? Pressing further, researchers noticed that areas struck by lightning usually show a steady clockwise bend. Okay, okay, we're with them so far. So what about the strange, seemingly intentional patterns that crop circles form? Well, Russian researchers have an answer for that too. Aliens, or Norse gods, or pixies. They're still running tests. Not really sure yet. But that's the feed, and there is no explanation required here. None. No. Lightning strikes. Uh, yeah, lightning bolts, like the LARPers How throw. How do they explain the microwave. missing cow asses? Oh, I'm not yeah. aware of that. I can explain the one with your face on it. Well, yeah. That someone, was me. Someone used a board and a strap just like they would with the crop circle, but what <laughs> yeah. does that have to do with it? Yeah, uh, yeah, that took a turn for the worst. I'm hey! Still, I'm still thinking about it. Just stop, just stop. I'll, I'll, I'll take the care of this. What While you're thinking? searching eBay for partying flamingos, just take a moment to check out our special g Foria auction starting tomorrow and running through the airing of g Foria on August 10th. There's a selection of exclusive items that will be up for sale, all of which have been autographed by real celebrities. Hot celebrities. Not imposters like us. There you go. Hey, look, there's Hal Sparks signing something, I guess, for uh, David Jaffe. So, you've got that, a G4, a gift bag, a pyromat gaming chair. Everybody loves him. He's funny. And even a Roboraptor, the little robotic thing. All right. proceeds, most he importantly... He signed something, the Roboraptor? What? Uh, I don't think he signed... Did he sign the Roboraptor? Maybe he did. I don't know. Most important part, though, Sean, all proceeds are going to be donated to the charity organization LA Works. So, neither of us see a dime. Yeah, I'm not getting paid for the show either. That's all right. We're going to do some community service, though, right now. We're going <laughs> to give back even further. I'm going to let you take the reins. We're taking some relationship nice. in all calls right. and giving advice. Jesse from Baltimore, what do you got? Sean, baby, I want to know what color you think works best with the ladies. Um, Assuming actually, he means hair. <laughs> I'm hoping. Okay. I mean, I mean, I mean too, I hope. Um, I guess pink, it lets, let you know, lets them know you're sensitive. But uh, this is a true story. I actually uh, brought a girl home one night, and it was in a dark bar. And in the morning, she said to me, word for word, if I'd known your hair was blue, I wouldn't have gone home with you. Brilliant. That really, so not blue, I guess, is not my blue. answer. And you went back because since the appearance on the show, you've been swarmed by 12-year-old <laughs> right. boys to... and one or two women. This is how I fight them off with a stick, there with you the go. blue hair. And now, Brandon joins us on the phone from Jacksonville, Florida. Brandon, are you there? Yeah. How's it going? Pretty good. Hey. Pretty good. Are you actually, I'm you want to get... I hope that I got on. Yeah, no, 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 you're here. And, Welcome. And, and Sean would like to give you some good advice. I'm ready. Hello, Mr. Baby. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> Very well, thank you. What's your question? Uh, yeah, would it be a good idea to actually meet a girl that you met online? Um, I've done this, and it's hit and miss. Uh, you always, you always got to take whatever weight class they're in and add 40 pounds. So yeah. if she says she's fit, mm, that means... Yeah. And if she says she's voluptuous, you're going you're gonna to need like a motorized cart to move her around. Probably. <laughs> Scooter at the supermarket yes. is what that means. Uh, basically, take, take whatever uh, peg your standards are at. Like if it's at a seven, pump it down a notch. Pump it or, down. Six. Right. And they'll be good. But you're meeting them on the internet. You can meet in a secret place. No one has to know. No, give them your address. It'll be safe. Honestly. That's unethical advice. Uh, do Forget we have time it. for one more? I don't think we do. Oh, we All do. Right. Oliver on the phone from Dallas, Texas. Are you there, Oliver? Hey, man. Uh, I was just asking. Uh, yeah, how, why is it so hard to find uh, hardcore gamers that are, uh, that are female? Mm, oh, I know excellent. the answer to this. Oh, perfect. Uh, things with electronics in them break when they get near women. <laughs> really? It's true. I, 
Is it, is it a reaction to pheromones? Is it... Uh... Science may never know. Okay. Russian scientists might, Russian scientists real can ones figure this out, yeah, clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not licensed to run right. or something. I, I have met uh, hardcore gamer girls, but they're like hardcore gamer guys. You don't want to touch them. They're, they're growing beetles. You know, they're, they're, they're gross people. <laughs> done and done. When we come back, we have our damn good lamb party and then Sarah's good website. I probably should have switched that up. Damn it. Damn it. I do that all the time. See you soon. On the next attack of the show, Chris Nall of FilmCritic.com wants you to do his job. He'll show you what to do with those thumbs. Plus, DEFCON 13 suffers another invasion of little plastic bugs. We have another report straight out of Hacker Central. And prepare to receive a hot Carl. Uh, I mean, prepare to receive hot Carl. Uh, you know what? This is never going to sound right. Hip-hop artist Hot Carl performing live. That's the next attack of the show. I feel dirty. Okay, now listen up. 50 of you are going to our LAMP party. 25 of you ain't coming back. The game is Battlefield 2. Julie Stouffer, host of G4's very own Electric Playground, graces us with her lovely presence today. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. I'm honored. Julie, before we get started, I've got a piece of business to take care of. Really? One moment. All yes. right. Julie, as promised earlier, I told you I was going to show you my love sack, and I know that you, you were getting excited about it, but it's really not you know, what you had in mind. Instead, That's very square. This is the love sack. Nice. It's like a, it's like a bean bag for gamers with a lot of money. <laughs> with a lot of money, yes. I see. I see. And you look at, comfortable. Well, you know, sitting on my sack, so I'm just as comfortable as I can get. But we're giving away six of these on today's show, mm. along with a couple different things. We've got a game here, Risk Your Life. We've got an MP3 player, MSI, very, very nice. Uh, we also have a hat. Oh, I don't know I want what the hat. size you are. Maybe you can hold on to that, Risk Your Life <laughs> as well, and a, and a shirt. All you know, I think I'd actually take the game because, contrary to popular belief, things don't explode that are electronic when they're around me. I don't know. I think Sean Baby is uh, going to test that out maybe a little later <laughs> in the show. Anyway, it's all from Planet Wide Games. Why don't you take the hat and the game? All right, all right. Yeah. And uh, it's a random drawing, Julie, so I can't really just give these to you today. Six Dang. lucky gamers are going to get all this cool stuff from Planet Wide Games. You just got to go to g4tv.com slash lovesack and register to win. So, Julie, back to you. Back to me. You've had quite an interesting career in uh, reality television, haven't you? Well, I uh, guess uh, my video game career kind of did start in reality television. It's kind of odd. And what is that? Well, I was on The Real World on MTV. Oh, right. Five years ago or so. And uh, after I got done, the first place I went was straight to Victor Lucas and Tommy Tallarico and basically begged them to let me try out for their show. And uh, lo and behold, here really? I sit, the host of one of the hosts of Electric mm -hmm. Playground. And did, so, yeah. did, did your real world experience, and I mean that in the television show, fake real world experience, have help you any way that you're now on Electric Playground? Help me any way? That, <laughs> you know, it Julie, actually... I'm sitting on my own sack. <laughs> Get, cut me some no, right well, here. Believe it or not, <laughs> as, as you sit in your sack, um, it actually did help me a lot because you, you'd be surprised the people that start calling you. I mean, people actually pay attention to you yeah, after you've been very, on a reality television very show. Very well known. I'm not sure why, but... Well, it's based at cable. <laughs> That's true. It you, is cable. You, you have other stuff that you're working on as well? Um, you know, I do work a lot on... Uh, I, I do all kinds of stuff, but basically I really like working in the industry, in the video game industry, yeah. and so I've been trying to avidly pursue different avenues. I hosted a uh, uh, Chatterbox, which is a uh, radio show, mm. and I'm involved in some other things I can't really talk about right now, but some, some web stuff. Big, big movies. We'll just assume everything. Yes, me and Tom Cruise. Crazy right. Cruise well, he's and I. Cool. Be sure to visit Julie's website at planetjulie.com for all this exciting news going on with Julie over here. Yeah. And be sure to stick around for our high score win later in the show. Now, watching a website achieve the level of damn good is kind of like watching a child grow without, you know, all the commitment and nurturing and all that crap. I hate kids, too. What about you? I love them. They're so adorable. Uh -huh. I 
Yeah, I want to yeah. smack him in the face. Really bad. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's get to more important topics at hand. Let's. Like having a cocktail party and knowing how to create really fabulous drinks for all right. your guests. I don't know. I, you know, I'm new to the drinking thing. I, you, you know, know what? I, I admit that I will have a drink every now and again, right. but I don't really know how to mix drinks. <laughs> I like how you say every now and again. You every, know. every, pretty much regularly yeah, yeah. every Friday, and it continues till Monday morning. But. That aside, I don't really know how to make drinks, and I certainly wouldn't know how to impress right. anybody if they came over and they wanted me to sure. make something fancy. So that's why a website called The Mixelator is totally up our alley today. Yes. So here we are, and what we say, it's saying, ready for your cocktail? Let's begin. And it's going to break it down. It wants to know what kind of cocktails are we looking for. That's how it's going to help us. Well, so, for example, yeah. you want something, you know, like a martini. Are you thinking margarita? Are you thinking Bloody Mary style? It says meaty drink. Or do you want the mixer to just choose randomly for you? So, mm. I'll just say for our purposes here, let's go with aromatic, right? Yeah, you like a good martini, yeah. or Manhattan, or something like that. So, it says specify your cocktail hour. You talking first thing, afternoon, nightcap, mixer's choice. I'll say evening because I, you know. Try not to drink before noon. Sure. So, you know, that, that kind of works. Uh, cocktail strength. Strong, medium, light. It says, caution, there are no weak cocktails. So we'll go with strong because, you know, if we're going well, to do it, if you're going to do it, you right, might as well go big, right? Yeah. So we, and, and we'll pick a fancy production just for fun. And I'll say, oh, I would like the characteristic to be a bit more on the tart side. Create your automatic cocktail. And at this point, the oh, shaking things up. it's working. It's saying, I'm creating your perfect cocktail. What is with the lightning bolts and the I don't, It's just trying to be cool. Right. It's trying to be, uh, and what we've got is a Cree here. Oh. And then here we've got, uh, you know, one and a half ounce of Puerto Rican rum, some brandy, aromatic bitters, blah, 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 blah. Now, if you were to say to yourself, hey, aromatic bitters, I don't know what those are. I don't yeah. know how to get them. You lost All me. of these are clickable. So let's say we click on aromatic bitters. It'll give us a really nice explanation of what they are, nice. where you could buy them. Here's a sample bottle. You can blow it up. Here are all the different kind of bitters that you could buy, and even places in the U.S. and abroad that you could buy them. So this is this site will help you get torn up no matter what time of day or what you're looking for. Exactly. And, you know, at first when I saw I was like, yes, this is my absolute best site, favorite site ever. But right. it's really, like, well done and helpful. So, oh, okay. Mixelator. Well, good. Use it. It's Party. Enjoy. Really Margarita Friday tomorrow. Margarita Friday. Perhaps the Mixelator can help us uh, produce the best Cadillac margarita on the heavy side as possible. I think it, I think Are you it with can, me? Oh, yeah. Great. Get today's website link at attackoftheshow.com where life is just a little bit more foggy. <laughs> it is lately. <laughs> we need to tap the brakes a little here, but then we're going to slam full speed into the ultimate gaming machine. We'll punch it, too, apparently. <laughs> Welcome back to the uh, attack of the uh, Home Shopping Network. Uh, can you see my face? Can you see the excitement? Because I'm ready to give you the deal of a lifetime. This next block of merchandise is just perfect for those of you out there who happen to be building. The ultimate game machine. All week here at Attack of the Home Shopping Network, we've been showing the latest in tech for the ultimate game machine. We have a whole slew of peripherals to show you today. And they must go. They must go. Our warehouse was destroyed in a possible insurance fraud scheme, and we need to move it I'm out. excited to be here, Doug. We need to get it out. It's, yes, I am Doug Bernardi, uh, joined by Hank uh, Laserface. Hank Laserface Slade. Hank, a uh, pleasure to have you. As always, your specialty is in the peripheral department. Let's sell some peripherals. Let's do it. Starting things right off, you can't get anywhere without a mouse pad, Hank. You just can't do it, and we've got one for you. This is the Funk Surface 1030 mouse pad item 373. I'm, I'm blind uh, in my left eye legally. I'm sorry, I can't read the number. Uh. But here is the mouse pad nonetheless, and this thing... Now this seems easy to use, Doug. It, it's very easy, smoother than the inner walls of I, my real doll. It, it has, I have can, a savage learning disability. I'm, can I, even I use this? I'm telling you, you spin it around, it's got grain on one side, the mouse moves a little harder, you spin it around again, here's your back to slip. It's also a grill. It can turn a can of dog food into a delicious dinner. Uh, it can't, Hank. I'm sorry. It has no cooking ability. I ate ten breasts of chicken off of that earlier, Doug. I'm, I'm sorry. You probably have some and you should see a doctor. Now, immediately. tell me what this is. Hank, this is a mouse. This nope. is a mouse today. This is not the kind of mouse you can eat. This is not. This will not uh, scurry across your desktop. It will rest comfortably in your hand when you are mousing. You can click multiple times. It's like kegels for your index finger. The ladies will love it. It's a Logitech MX518 gaming mouse. It doesn't get any better than that. Woo! In fact, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. My hair is eating my head. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Is not, that is not good. Is it burning? We have a caller. We have a caller on the caller, phone. Caller, you're on. Are you here? Hello. Hey, this is uh, Ted from Burlington, Vermont. Had to call about Welcome the mouse. Welcome to the show, Ted. Ted, I, I don't blame you. We got a lovely mouse here. Uh, are you a fan of the, uh, the Logitech? 
I am a huge fan of that mouse. I have six of them already. I got to get three more right now. You're collecting them I like this collar. Collecting you know, them like cats, aren't you? You know that that mouse has five different custom sensitivity settings. I don't know what that means, but I know I like it. I sure don't. And you know what? I don't know what you're talking about, but I know I like you. Oh, <laughs> thanks, guys. See, I like him, too. I just got out of the hospital. I, I was selling swords and almost died. I will bite the back of your neck. Let's move on. Cool. We have a keyboard. Who cares? It's got keys. D-Link router. This is a gigabit gaming router. Now, you're asking yourself, I don't yourself, know what hey, those words mean, Exactly. Dad. Me neither. But what I do know is that it prioritizes packets, okay? It's going to sort them in an order that gives your gaming the importance over anything else. Little, little cyber chat in a hentai irk room? Mm -mm. Put that in the back burner. You want to download the latest WoW patch update? That's great. Put that on the back burner. Keep it cooking. Battlefield's important. Terrific. The dealing's going to take care of it. I love the feel of silk on my crotch. Um, what's, yeah. what's next? Let's move on. Let's bring up some speakers because really... Speakers. We've got one, two, two four speakers. We're crazy on this show. I if don't know how we do it. throw in a subwoofer. Let's bring up the subwoofer. The bass is loud it enough. It weighs 950 pounds, Doug. It will rock the taint right in between your thighs. Clear off your body. It's the Logitech Z5500 Digital 5.1 sound system. Item number 641 something else. Uh, it I'm doesn't... still too stupid to know what that means, Doug. Well, it's got a plethora of features. It has a control panel, which I believe is, is, is missing now at this point. The, the uh, insurance fraud scheme. It's got an LCD I think I might have eaten it. It's all right. Let's move on. Where's the LCD screen? It's right there. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Just gawk at it. This is the ViewSonic N2750W 27-inch LCD monitor. I want to make love to this TV. You should right now. <laughs> we have another caller on the line. I believe it's about the, uh, the LCD itself. Hello? Caller, are you there? Hello? Hey, th hey, this is uh, Ted from Burlington again. I, ha I had to Chad, call back about I this monitor. I missed you, Ted. No, uh, what, what's, what's going on, Chad? I had to call back about this monitor. I the don't blame you. The picture on this monitor is so brilliant. Every time I turn it on, it almost sets my house on fire. It'll do it. It'll do it. Burn the retinas right out of your socket. I did I that mean. to my ex-wife. <laughs> you set her on fire, I think? And her family. Oh. My family. Oh. Where am I? Stop. That's a little uncomfortable right now, Hank. I can't tie my shoes by myself. For more information on these fine products, visit our website. But be sure to come back because it's Friday, and that means Cubic Zirconia Palooza. Attack of the Home Shopping Network will return right after this. You disgust me. You are a sick pig. Attack of the Attack. Attack. All right, let's take a look at the high scores from each round of this little land party. This is my favorite part of the whole week. I love it. There's numbers and names. Sometimes, I mean, occasionally. I Sometimes we mix it up. We got a hey, machete, machete, Dr. Armenian. Ooh, a tie. Oh, another 31. Liquid metal. There was a tie. That was not the first land party tie I think we've had in a while. Congratulations to both of them. Big Joe Fed, excellent job there. Everybody did a great job. Congrats to our high scores, and of course, thanks to our guest, Julie Stouffer, who thanks, put up Julie. with Hi, put up with she Brendan's love sack. Very gentle, love very sack. nice of her. She, and she was delicate. She was. Yeah. You like our hair, Julie? Thanks and if you didn't get to that. play this week, just go to our website right now and register for next Thursday. It's time for some chat room goodness, however, though, Miss Lane. Awesome. Uh, Pest0003 wants to know, why is Sean Baby such an angry man? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to guess uh, stupid questions from dudes named Pest. Oh. Oh, wow. he's calling him out. He, he could join Jack angry. Thompson. Ang like anger rises. We have, it. we have a tag team, it looks like. A it's this kid's fault. You want me happy? Would ask, I'm so mad. Brendan, you're going to get I know how to stop suicide attackers. Yeah, exactly. This chapter's about hey. biting people's necks out. <laughs> next question, next question. Gordon Freeman, 45, <laughs> wants to know, what writer does Sean Baby look up to? Um, my favorite writer is Garth Ennis, the comic writer. Uh, I love Trey Parker's work from South Trey Park, Parker's of course. brilliant. Um, yeah, those are my two favorites. Okay, fair enough. Good answer. Jamin05, would Kevin start an auction to make his hair orange on eBay? I would definitely start an eBay I'll auction. Forty dollars. I don't understand that question. Right, I'll tell you what. Uh, yes, I would. Okay. I would have to. I'll have to set a price. But if go to the forums, start it. Start, oh, start I a see. Make it fifty. I'll if put the 50. poll is is if there's enough you mean, people want. If someone want, pays enough, you'll do it. Yeah. If someone really wants Wait, us to the, do it enough, if the poll gets enough he, votes, I'll dye it orange. He's got to do a, a mohawk though. Sweet. I'll, I'll do a faux hawk. I'll give you the faux hawk. Don't, this is LA. Faux oh, hawks fine. are girlish. Well, I mean, what do you want from me? Not a faux hawk. All right, no faux hawk. But start a poll. If it gets enough, we'll start an auction. That's it. Time flew, and I think we had some fun. I think we had point. some fun. Yeah. Thanks to our guest, Julie Stouffer and Matt, Mike DeMarit. Sorry. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> and, of course, right. Brendan and Sean, baby. It's great Bye. to be back. Sean I'll works see you on the show. You don't have to thank him. <laughs> well, I thought it's polite, because yeah. he's not going to work here much longer. That's true. Yeah. <laughs>
knew it. Oh, no! Oh! Oh, that's... Oh, oh that's not it's mine! mine. No. Good! All right, all no, right, that's, that's enough. enough. Polarity has ensued. You want to wear the glasses out? Mm -hmm. Attack of the Show Wardrobe, provided by Jinx. Edited by...